Hey everybody, Norm over here, and it's Make Fun of Norm Day. Uh, uh, we got my no. buddy John Shanks over here, world famous producer, uh, played with a million different people. Um, how many number ones have you had? Uh, uh, 46. Seven, like 47 number scary. ones, and I only had a number two. <laughs> so, uh, That's good. Uh, good to know. Uh, well, He's there fluid. There you go. Things are flowing. It's right a here. different kind of number two. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, so John also is a guitar fanatic and uh, actually even had a limited uh, Sunburst Les Paul reissue. Uh, that was a John Shanks model. Right, right, a collector's choice. What number was that? Number seven. Collector's Choice 7, which was based off, uh, off my 1960 uh, early 00 uh, Les Paul, 1960. You have a few of those, though, don't I you? Have a, yeah, I have a 59 uh, Sunburst that's kind of a beater, and then a, a 58 Gold Top. Late, late 58. Which dark back or light back? No, light, light back. Light back. Which is... Because um, we've had two late 58 gold tops come through. They were both dark backs. So I was yeah. wondering if that was just a thing at that point. You had a light I don't, back one. Mine, uh, yeah, I just I bought years ago. And it's a it's an amazing, amazing guitar. That actually might be the, the one. The one. The 60's pretty amazing. But and they're all great. You know, it's just that the attention to detail and the craftsmanship is you know, incredible. So, um, other than Les Pauls, what else? Uh, You've collected a lot of guitars over your time. What is the focus? Like we were talking about a '59 two pickup custom that Joe. Right, had. Joe. Has like, what is the stuff that like really like? I have a, we're I have all kind of jaded. I have a well, I have a '60 ES355 black. One you do of, have one of the one other. Of, one of one. Factory mono. Mono black 50. Yeah, ES355s, and uh, uh, I have I have. A '59 black mono, and the other one is Keith's that I guess that belonged to Johnny Marr from the Smiths, which is pretty awesome, um, you know. And then, it, I, which I love those guitars, and uh, a bunch of early, I have a '55 White Guard Esquire that I love, and a '52 Tele that I, I love, and, um, and blue. a bunch of Pelham Blue, uh, a Trini Lopez Pelham Blue, and. Um, but then w weird guitars like uh, a Bill Lewis. A Bill Lewis is what Gilmore used on Dark Side of the Moon. He made, uh, his, uh, he was out of Vancouver, and you know, that was one of those guitars you just look for for years, just being a fan of, of David Gilmore, and that I, I eventually traded with Bob Rock. He actually owned the guitar, and I, I collect high watts, old high watts, and so we traded a bunch of script. Uh, high watts logo high watts for I traded for that guitar so I'm always kind of you know there's those guys that the community and, no. but it's you know all I, I was saying to you about your book your first book how important it was for me just as a fan of you know seeing high quality guitars and learning about colors custom colors and just it was like the Bible for me. So I know you were downplaying it. Well, being the, you know, it's me I, again. I had a number two one time. I made <laughs> I made a number two. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> tell tell me why you dig old guitars. I mean, just you know, seriously, because I mean, you know, we have people that watch, and it's all like, you know, I like the, the reissues, and there's a lot of cool reissue stuff. But what what about the old? But guitars? I'm I'm weird because I'm I'm that guy who also likes. Uh, there's there there's some boutique uh, guitar makers that I really enjoy. You play a lot of new stuff on the road. Uh, I right? do. I mean, I play Sirs and I I like Ronins and I think uh, you know particularly the the Marari, and uh, uh, I think those pickups are cool. Those big gold foil pickups that he does uh, that John Reed does or Marari uh, Ronin does, and I love John's pickups because I've known John or John's right. guitars because I've known John since the early 90s when he was still at Fender and to me John was the first guy to do that kind of winding uh, the hum canceling pickups and basically that story was I was I saw Jeff Beck at the Greek years ago even though I think it was like the there and back to or, my, or maybe it was just past that and um, call the custom shop and, and Mark Hendrick and guys like that sure. were there and and Mark was like, you need, you need to talk to this guy, John, hold on. And then John Sir answered the phone and we started talking. I said, I saw Beck last night and there was none of this. 
Uh -huh. He said, oh, good observation. He goes, I just wound these pickups for Jeff and uh, I did a set for Michael Landau. And, and I said, well, can, is there a way to, and they were so gracious and uh, hooked, I, so I have two guitars that, uh, that, that have those original pickups. One, one of them is wound like Jeff's, and the other one was is wound like uh, Michael's. Did you so. know John English back in yeah, the day too? Yeah, a little John bit. John was kind of my favorite of the master builders back in the time. He was so. But those guys were so. It was so fun to go down to the custom shop back then. Not that it isn't now, but it's back then. You would go down and. You know, Mark Kendrick would walk me around, and just we would pull out, uh, you know, the the original custom color sheet, and so they made me a Sherwood Forest Green Strat that I used with Melissa Etheridge for many years, and had uh, John's pickups in it, and uh, um, George Amakay did the inlays, you know, so it was, they were really supportive of me back then, and still are, and so it's just. They're, they're Tell us about some of the other people that you played with and produced um, and all that. You well, know, I kind of, you know, in the early 20s, I, I, I met Melissa Etheridge and was touring with her and joined her band. And in the early 20s? No, in my early 20s. Oh, no, I, no. I was saying that's kind of no, like not. my youth in the early 20s there. No. Comedy. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so I, w I met her, uh, you know, when I was still playing clubs and it was at Madame Wong's. I remember she, she walked up to me and she was like, listen, I like your playing and I'm playing tomorrow night at the Roxy and I want you should come check me out. And I went down and, and I knew right then when I saw her just how special she was and, the, and I thought, well, this is. Yeah, I should be in this kind of band. She's and great and she's really cool. Too. Yeah, she's really like great. Like she's like myself. I just we just did her new record, and that comes out um, really soon. So uh, it was fun to you know work with her again. And she, I mean, it's like she's family. So uh, um, so I played with her on and off for ten years. And um, Rod Stewart. And then I played with Rod Stewart for about three years. And uh, then I there was that moment where I left. Rod to really concentrate on writing and producing and and make that my primary focus and um, because while it's great to be on the road and, and and all that and get that experience of working with a band being a part of a team which is I think vital vital for any musician because there's nothing like being in an ensemble where somebody turns to you and is like you're rushing or you're not you're not remembering, and and being part of a uh, that kind of dynamic is super important for uh, people coming up. And there's you know not that I don't support all, and not that there are amazing players on the internet, which there there are, but there's something you know until you play with a band, all those it's what you don't play and what the subtlety of your playing is what space space yeah. and just you know playing what's appropriate for the song and coming up with hooks and parts and i mean if i go out there i mean i got a million stories of guys that we all know that have lo come and gone and lost gigs because of you know not fitting in and just letting your ego get involved and you know there's a there, the thing I learned from being a, a studio player is that you have to play for the song. You know, you you have to work quickly, come up with parts, hooks, and layer and create dynamics, and then you're gone. Compliment so, the vocal. Compliment. It's about the song. You know, and and being a, a writer is, I, you know, I, I worked on Barbara Streisand's last record, and a friend of mine called me and said, you know, I went and listened to the songs, and there's not much guitar, even though your credit is the guitar player. I said, well. That was what was Wasn't appropriate. Neat. I was more. I actually was doing more synths and programming, and but that's part of the gig, you know. That's you know. I, it's not my solo record. It's not a guitar record. It's it's what's appropriate for the job, and you know you have to learn that, or you or you you have to adapt. And so there are times where you get to solo, and there are times where you just. You have to know the right tone and part for, especially with Bon Jovi, it's like Phil X and I are doing it together. And if we're doing the exact same tone or... Same register. Or the guys, same, the just, register yeah, or. competing for the same space, it's not healthy. It's not, a, 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 it's not conducive to supporting the artist, which is John. 
So our tones have to be uh, different, and we 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 talk about it. We geek out pretty hard. We watch everything we play, and you know, and it's kind of like, oh, the telly works better against your P90, or because our amp setups are have to be just just the styles have to fit each other. So it's it's actually a really fun gig because we our styles. If I'm what are, I don't want to say shredding, but if I'm if I'm, if you have to let whoever band you're in or whatever, if I'm competing with him or, or if he was playing a few notes and I'm playing a few notes, then that doesn't, even if, then I have to shred more or play faster. So we try to find a good balance to where I'm supporting him and he's, he's supporting you. Yeah, vice versa. And that's when it's, there's harmony, you know, which is great. So. You do a lot of acoustic stuff too. Um, by the way, uh, Mark is holding like a banner J45. That's a all mahogany, mahogany mm -hmm. top. This guitar that John has is a combination. 1942 Gibson J45 banner headstock SJ. Now, what does the dot mean? The dot mm -hmm. means that we inventory it. Okay. So it's on our inventory. So meaning it's so available, it's on the site, yeah. kids? Mm -hmm. <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not that together. You know, I mean, you know, but uh, most of them are, if we inventory them, otherwise, you know. But this, what's kind of really cool about this, it has um, features of both an SJ and a J45. It has a dots on there, but it's got the multiple bindings. So right, for example, so these did not, Come with dots. The SJs, SJs have the split right. parallelogram. uh, parallelograms, and that like an has, ES three forty five. Yeah, like right. That kind of. So, but this is also rosewood, which is high, highly unusual. That's the Woody Guthrie guitar. <laughs> this machine kills fascist rosewood wow. SJ banner. That's the guitar. Yeah, it's a, this is one of those you know big chunky nag. You know, no one, rod, yeah. right? No truss rod. One, Right away, you're just microphones love guitars like this. So yeah, well yeah, and it's available here at Norms. Should I say the price? Uh, you could sure if you like. It could be yours for 25k. What's the price on this one? Like 11.5. 11.5, .5. and here we go. This is a 61 Texan, very right. early. Which are which are great. These headstocks Short are head amazing. Short headstock. And this Wider is cool, too. Yeah, that's uh, Frontier. Frontier. Right, which, is, which I think is a really underrated guitar. Absolutely. This was the equivalent to a dog. Yeah, great recording guitar, too. Obviously, t tonally different from uh, the J45. Play some on this too, because this is like the mahogany version of that other guitar. He's trying so. to get me to like this guitar because it's probably well, the most I... attainable. <laughs> Mark, you have that all mahogany. Just nice. So noodle a little bit just so that you can show them how you guys compliment each other. And then I'll compliment both of you. <laughs> Take them. I think we should wrap it up. You're paying, right? You're buying, <laughs> You're buying today. I'm buying today. John, can I ask you one more question? Sure. In an era uh, where they say guitar is dead and there's a record producer that makes pretty guitar-centric records, what's it going to take to keep moving, moving guitar music forward and into the forefront again? Well, you know, t listen, to me, two days ago, uh, Casey Musgraves won Album of the Year. It's a good start. Great yep. record. Beautiful record. Great songs. Cool guitar, you know, acoustic, acoustic driven, you know, uh, cool guitar parts. There, there, there is. It's in there, 
Uh, you know, uh, even when I, I try with, even with, with John or Bon Jovi, you know, where we even, you know, you're trying to put in guitar solos. Keith Urban obviously is really great at it, where it's still pop, it's still country pop, but there's still uh, lots of guitar hooks. And it, so it's, um, you know, Greta Van Fleet won a Grammy, best rock album, so that's super helpful. And um, I, I think, you know, the appreciation of, of learning everything is important. So learning the, di the, the differences tonally of all these amazing guitars is super important as a, being a musician. But it's also, you know, you, learning your laptop, learning all the, the facets of, 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 the, of music is super important. But I don't think this is going away. I, I, I just don't. Um, you know, the more you get to play good, uh, fine guitars, you know, it's, it ex expands your palate. And I think that's really uh, important. But I don't think th it's, it's going, going away. away. I don't it's think it's away. going away. You know, I mean, it goes through phases. And, um, you know, I, maybe that's my wishful thinking. I remember there was that... You know, there was that quote I remember Tom Petty said that was, uh, you know, that he's like the old jazz musicians of the 50s. I guess he was feeling a little frustrated with where he was at. But, you know, I know for me, it's even when I, when I went to NAMM uh, this year, I'm excited to go see the Dirty Knobs. You know, I, I'm excited to see Peter Frampton play. Now, am I of, of that generation? I, I don't know. But you look around the room, and there's there's young musicians there, and they're with their mouths open because they see someone like Mike Campbell or Peter Frampton, and their tone and their sound, and you, that doesn't lie. That moves you. So I'm always want to I always want to be moved emotionally. So if, as long as I don't think that's going away. So that and that can be. I still think that's the the guitar for me. Yeah. You know. So, well, go. guitars are great. John, you know, is one of the purveyors, perverters, everything, whatever you but want. But it's, it's a small community. Like I watch your, I was saying, you know, I watch, we watch everything. So it's, you know, there is a community and with Tim Pierce and all these guys and um, they're in Tom Bukovac in Nashville. Like I, he and I, we, we talk, we always talk about pedals and guitars and, you know, um, yes, the business is in an interesting place, and but we are blessed that we get to work and do what we love, and it's a passion. And you know, you can't really, you can't do the compare and despair thing on Instagram. That's a very dangerous thing to do, because well, you, it's a, you can always put yourself. Everyone's life seems so much more exciting. Well, you know, you know, if it all fails, you can go back to dancing like you used to dance with Britney Spears. Right? Absolutely. You know, so. I've, you know, I might pull a muscle, but... Uh, <laughs> you know. So we can fall back on that dancing career. Yeah, the, 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 the dancing, you know, the Backstreet Boys. Norm has to throw that nonsense in. I can't help it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> but we love John, and John is the real deal. And, uh, you know, it's always great to have great players and kind of, you know, tell people, you know, just show people some of the ways that you've kind of worked over the years and all that. And this new thing that we're doing, the All Guitar Network, is actually really cool to kind of try to help promote guitars, guitar playing, and all the people that love all the little gear and all the crap that we all go gaga over. I mean, listen, I still, I'm, I still do it. You know, there's a certain pedal that comes out or, you know, even stuff that I, I'm lucky enough to work on, um, like some of my guitar pedals that we're doing. And, but it's, uh, it's just chasing tone, you know, where, and it's stuff that you can apply in, in real time where you go, okay, I, God, I wish I had a pedal that did this, or I wish my guitar had that sound. Why? What is it that makes that sound? Oh, it's you start learning. Ninety-eight percent fingers. Yeah, and you know, I guess it. it's it, you know, I'm I'm me regardless of whatever I play. Oh, my God! Hey, man! Fucking hey! Listen, I thought you were like a wholesome kind of guy. Right here, Chris. They're interviewing me. See this guy, he brings out the worst in me, man. Hey. Oh my God! Chris oh, Isaac no, dropped in. Wow! Hi. How you doing? I think come I came sit. For my guitar lesson. Come sit on the couch. <laughs>
Yeah. So we're doing it. We're being. It. They're, they're talking. They pulled me in. I got the C chord. Oh, you said I'm gonna close. You taught me that. Mm -hmm. 